you for the introduction. Um, this morning we start talking about the utilization of some of the legumes, in this case uh, lentils, and the idea is that we've been trying for many years to add value to uh, legume seeds. And we've been focusing basically in pulses, such as lentils, dry pea, and garbanzo beans over the last few years. And this is another attempt also to create a value-added product, in this case with the addition of nutritional yeast. This, uh, I've been working for a few years with the largest uh, company in the world of yeast production, which is Le Safri, a yeast corporation, which is a French company. Uh, also this morning I was trying to emphasize in the uh, nutritional and health value of pulses. And in this case, over here we have highlighted the beneficial effects. Many of these nutritional components have similar effect in, the in reducing car cardiovascular disease, in this case, in the case of the protein and dietary fiber, in, uh, decrease, uh, increase satiety or basically favoring or helping in decrease the incidence of obesity also by proteins in beans or pulses in general and dietary fibers. Uh, the prevention of cancer by some of the phytonutrients present in there. The, uh, it's a gluten-free product, therefore preventing the celiac disease. And the, uh, we have folic acid, which is a neutral, uh, helping in a neutral, to avoid a neutral tube defect or the prevention of the spina bifida. And in the case of the nutritional yeast, is, uh, uh, we're talking about yeast grows from pure strain of Saccharomyces cerevisiae on a purifying nutrient source, especially for its nutritional value. And this is basically some of the attributes of the nutritional yeast. Excellent source of protein with very good profile of amino acids, rich in vitamin B complex like folic acid as well, high in dietary fiber, but in this case, we have a beta-glucan, which is a very important soluble dietary fiber. Naturally low in fat and sodium, without other preservative, kosher certificates, and is a non-GMO. Basically, this is some of the most common applications of the uh, brewer yeast, which is a, uh, it's another uh, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. And we use the application in uh, sourdough, root beer, bread, spirits, beer, and so on. But what we wanted to do is to try to use, well, this is the, uh, the process to produce the nutritional yeast. We decided the seed propagation going through uh, the nutrition of the yeast, yeast separation, formation of the cream, pasteurization, cooling, drone drying of the yeast material, grinding and, and the production of the final product. And I was going to say that besides the application, the normal application of the Saccharomyces uh, uh, cerevisiae, in this case we wanted to basically utilize this yeast, but in this case the nutritional yeast of this, uh, this uh, uh, to use in different products. In this case, the development of cereal breakfast and snack products containing nutritional yeast. In this case, we have basically different, different uh, type of nutritional yeast. We have the soft flavor, which is high in protein and dietary fiber, the pro CSB, which is very high in B vitamins, another one that is very high in protein and flavors, another containing uh, high con con concentration of beta-glucan, beta and the one that we with working in this study was the a flavor. It's a yeast high in protein and dietary fiber. We presented before that the pyramid, the uh, step for a healthy, uh, healthy you basically re in include the consumption of high concentration of legumes, up to five and a half ounces for every day, which we don't meet. But the problem is that we don't have many available products from legume pulses. We have some from whole pulses, some made from whole, uh, with whole pulses, some with ground pulses, and some product made with ground pulses. And so 
we know that we can produce or can be, make many other products taking in, in account the value, the nutritional and health value of the impulses. And also taking in account the global market. In this case, we included over here, that is the, the high protein and low fat food and beverage is a very attractive market. It's a more than $40 billion. And now this is a, an evolving uh, market that continue increasing over the years. And we can use extrusion processing as well as we did before in order to add value to these products. Therefore, the objective of the study was to investigate the use of extrusion technology to develop ready-to-eat healthy expanded snack type products from lentil flowers fortified with nutritional yeast and to evaluate the sensorial, physical, chemical, and nutritional attributes of the developed extrudates. And the material were lentils and nutritional yeast. We evaluate the sensor evaluation of the product using the ranking test. We did the, uh, evaluate the proximal analysis and in vitro protein digestibility to basically relate to the nutritional value of this finished product. What are activities and indication of safety of the product and expansion ratio uh, is related to the crunchiness of the product. Bulk density, we did the measurement of scanning. Uh, uh, so, uh, as mechanical energy of the product, how much energy it takes to produce the product, a specific mechanical energy, and we run ANOVA and responsive methodology for the statistics. This is the pilot plant extruder that we use, and we tried two different uh, temperatures profiles, 140 and 160 die temperature, and we run the extruder at 500 RPM. We gather the, the raw material, we process it, we put another ingredient to make the formulation, and in this case, we contain lentil flowers and nutritional yeast. And it's important to notice the concentration of these components over here, very high in protein, but you can see the very, very high concentration of protein in the nutritional yeast, as well as the total dietary fiber, which is over here, divided in, in soluble dietary fiber and soluble dietary fiber. So we have a very high concentration of soluble dietary fiber, soluble dietary fiber as beta-glucan, and some amount of lipid present in nutritional yeast, more than in the uh, uh, lentils. Got a formulation, we produce the product, and when ran a sensor evaluation, and this was done in uh, individual booth on the subdued light to avoid any interference of visual uh, appear uh, an appearance of the uh, the color and appearance of the uh, of the uh, snack. We use a seven scale hedonic, hedonic scale seven point hedonic scale for this evaluation. We also the, uh, determine the in vitro protein digestibility, and we basically use the trypsin, chemotrypsin, and pepsin, or peptidases. We have the multi enzyme solution. We basically got five milliliters of this multi enzyme solution in 50 milliliters of protein suspension, and we measure basically the pH drop over 10 minutes. And we use this equation in order to determine the in vitro protein digestibility, where X was the pH value of the protein suspension after 10 minutes, and Y was the uh, in vitro protein digestibility expressed as percentage. Basically, the sensor evaluation told us that the uh, those Formulation containing up to 12% nutritional yeast were significantly preferred than those of the control. That means formulation with lentils that did not contain nutritional yeast. The 
This is a uh, nutritional profile of the product in which you can see that we had an increase in protein, significant increase in protein when we included the nutritional yeast with an increase of 13.12%. The same thing for mineral, we have a very high increase, significant, and then we also have a little bit increase of fat present in there, but very low. With regard to the in vitro protein digestibility, we use casein as a control, and then our formulation control, and that formulation containing 12% nutritional yeast. And we have, this one represented the raw material, the, the, the raw formulation, and this is the extruded formulation. And we can see, in this case, both extrusion processing and also the, the uh, uh, incorporation of 12% nutritional yeast in the formulation favor the in vitro protein digestibility. And we have that this protein digestibility was significantly higher with 6.24, which seems to, be, seems to be a little low compared to the big values that we have over here in other nutrients. However, 6.24, 6% of increase in digestibility is very significant. And this is the uh, profile of the uh, surface plot of the uh, uh, mechanical energy, specific mechanical energy, and we see that the specific mechanical energy was favored by an increase of nutritional yeast in the formulation. That means that as we increase the nutritional yeast in the formulation, there was less energy to process the product, which is basically related to the economy of producing a finished product commercially. With regard to the expansion ratio, of bulk density, and water activity, we have that the, uh, it was the formulation containing nutritional yeast had significantly lower expansion ratio than that one for the control. And if I remember, I told you that to pay attention to that particular values, nutritional values that we had present, we had very high concentration of dietary fiber. Dietary fiber is one of the factors that tend to have an effect on reducing the expansion ratio of a product. However, this value of 9.2 is acceptable because any value about 6% on, on expansion ratio is considered acceptable. We have a very low uh, values of bulk density and the water activity is very low compared to those of the hydrated foods. And my conclusion is that the uh, sensory evaluation test demonstrated that lentil-based extruded snacks containing up to 12% nutritional yeast had good acceptability by the testers than the protein, ash, mineral, fat, and dietary fiber of the extruded snacks increased at the concentration of nutritional yeast increase in the lentil-based formulation. That fortification with 12% nutritional yeast significantly increased the in vitro protein digestibility of the extruded snack. The effect of yeast fortification in some physicochemical parameters, the degree of expansion of the extruder was considered appropriate for expanded snacks. The bulk density was inversely related to expansion ratio and directly related to higher yeast concentration. The specific mechanical energy required to process the extruder was favored by higher yeast concentration, and the water activity of the extruder was very low and similar to those of the hydrated foods. And that the expanded extruded snack Thai food made from pulses based formulations fortified with nutritional yeast would generate economic advantage for pulses producers and food processors and provide consumers with highly nutritious, healthy, safe, and convenient food alternatives. I want to acknowledge Adeline Chong, which is one of the representatives of LESAF Nutritional Yeast for providing us with the funding to do the study. And 
my collaborators, Mr. James Pan and Matthew Tom, for assisting in this study as well. Once again, my working team trying to bring it together wherever I go. Thank you very much. And I open to any questions. Increasing what? Um, increasing ash content? Yes. yes. Have you any uh, idea of the mineral? The mineral content, no, we have not at this point. As, 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 as uh, my, my, my previous uh, 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 presenter, we're still working, you know, it's a working in progress at this time. And uh, we certainly plan to analyze some of these uh, minerals which have not been reported by the company as. Yes.